Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel Rosal on YouTube. This uh, channel usually goes by the full name of Daniel Rosal Jerusalem and Israel Unpacked. However, lately a big focus of the channel has been looking at Ireland's reaction to the uh, Gaza-Palestine conflict and whatnot. So this is a reaction to a reaction, very meta. Um, and what I'm going to be looking at today is a address by Richard Boyd Barris, the uh, arch nemesis of Israel in Ireland, or uh, the most strident anti-Israel figure that's really out there on the political spectrum, giving an address today. And I thought rather than just do another video, trying to highlight probably completely in, f for in futile, in futility, some of the extremist rhetoric about Israel that's coming out of Ireland and this is where I take an issue being tolerated in Ireland because there is such thing as hate speech and I think that Boyd Barrett in accusing Israel of uh, engaging in day in day out ethnic cleansing being a terrorist state what else has he said Co accusing Israel of being an, uh, you know an operator of apartheid war crimes um, you could probably fill up a little encyclopedia with Richard Boyd Barrett's various rants and claims about Israel uh, but what I thought I would do today is uh, just take a look at this uh, speech that went up on uh, Twitter earlier today from a rally in Dublin and just kind of dig deep into a little bit into why his rhetoric is I believe so damaging so I'm going to do it like this I have the Twitter video up here and I've just made attempts you know and I realized that this is probably doing absolutely nothing but I still believe it's it's important to be highlighted just an example I pointed out that this placard here from the river to the sea represents a call for the uh, elimination of the state of Israel. The river is the Jordan River. The sea is the Mediterranean Sea. And if you open up Google Maps or any mapping tool of your choice, you'll see that if we are freeing Palestine from the river to the sea, we have to kick out Israel in its entirety. And people will try to prefer sort of explanations for why it doesn't represent a call for the elimination of Israel and I think that it's uh, semantics it does um, at its most basic and obvious level that's what you mean right and the fact that I you know I pointed out that in protests across Ireland this chant was uh, was being uh, was being read out and uh, you know it's just kind of pitiful actually that there's you can basically say anything about Israel in Ireland um, and uh, you know it, it it's all fine there's no um, there's no real level or there's no real kind of enforcement here. And again, I'm not talking about criticism of Israel with people, you know, questioning whether the Israeli response in Gaza, Palestine is being proportionate, which I think is very legitimate. Um, I'm talking about people flatly calling for the elimination of Israel. Another uh, interesting uh, placard here, kick out the Israeli ambassador, the people before profit or PBP, have been pushing and now Sinn Féin's Mary Lou Macdonald has decided to after firstly saying that she didn't support it and now said ah you know what it's fine um and I say that you know if Ireland wants to kick out the Israeli ambassador we in Israel will save our money on the embassy and uh, maybe put it to better use and if Israel kicks out Ireland this is, seems to evade their uh, logic here there is such thing as reciprocity and diplomacy and Ireland will probably kick out the Isra or the Israel will kick out the Israeli embassy too and uh you know is is that going to serve Ireland's interest well I think it's a question I personally wouldn't be sad if it happened uh, at all but um just before people think you know think about the consequences of, of actions now one other thing I wanted to just say a word about the comments on this video I've been getting some hate mail recently I'm not talking about criticism I'm talking about flat out you know you should die and whatever uh, not very pleasant so I'm going to put the comments of this video on approved you have to be approved for the comment to show uh, just because um, it's otherwise hard for me to clean up the sort of hate mail as it comes in and distinguish it from the legitimate thoughts one very legitimate point of criticism that people have been making about my videos have been from coming from actually pro-israel people in ireland saying hey you're saying that we're all against you we're not all against you this is you can't judge a whole country by the actions of a few people and i say that's a very very fair point i'm working on a video about uh, irish support for israel because it exists um and i actually started many years ago a group called irish for israel that was an israel pro-israel lobby taken over by another individual now it's irish the ireland israel alliance so i'm very much aware that there is support for ireland and israel and i appreciate it um the point really that i'm doing on this youtube channel is critiquing two things one the extremism coming out of ireland someone asked me why am, why am i not doing extremism around the world frankly that would take way too much time 
and as a Jewish person who was born in Ireland and moved to Israel, this is a little slice of the uh, picture that interests me the most. Um, and I've lost my train of thought completely. This is why this is why you shouldn't do YouTube videos after a nap. Um, that was number one point. Uh, that yes, it's and secondly, um, the government policy. And I realize that some people may support Israel and Ireland, but I'm always trying to look more at what is the government saying and doing. And that's why I've been doing uh, a lot of focus on the various Ireland's voting actions at the EU, at the UN. And uh, as they say, actions speak louder than words. And I think it's very true in uh, looking at how Ireland reacts to Israel. So let's uh, look at our good friend Boyd Barrett and see what he has to say. And I'll pause the video periodically to make comments about why I think that it's sometimes crazy. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Martin, where are you? Where are you? Oops, that was mistaken. I'm going to just edit the... Where are you? Friends, friends, as we said, this uh, demonstration was originally called before the barbaric assault of Israel started against uh, Gaza. It was originally a demonstration about our fears that the Irish government want to undermine our tradition of neutrality. And as Sarah said, neutrality does not mean indifference. Neutrality does not mean doing nothing. Our, in Ireland, our tradition of neutrality comes from the fact that we were victims of colonial oppression. I'm just going to stop the video at this point. I just want to make a couple of observations, firstly. Now, there has been interesting comments in the Irish Parliament about neutrality. I just think it's amazing that people actually still believe that Ireland is, that neutrality is a thing in Ireland. It's so blatantly obvious when you're looking at it from the Israeli perspective that pretty much all of Ireland's foreign policy actions are not congruous at all. I'm talking about the Israel context here, but they're not in any way congruous with neutrality now you could say that neutrality is a is a very narrow definition and it refers to military neutrality military neutrality and that ireland has maintained that position probably because it has almost no army capable of uh you know taking on the israeli army so it's kind of a it's kind of a, a straw man argument um but the neutrality in terms of the foreign policy there's no semblance of neutrality ireland's uh foreign policy since just looking at the start of the conflict with trying to uh, get the EU blanket condemnation uh, aborted, basically, which failed. That's not neutrality. That's taking a pro-Palestine position. And uh, it just amazes me. I was watching a debate from the Irish Parliament last week in which uh, Jackie Healy Ray, a uh, quite entertaining politician from County Kerry, and a few other uh, members of the Irish Parliament uh, went on about Irish neutrality and how you know we shouldn't go too far in our criticisms of Israel. But to be honest, they've gone already far past the point of anyone ever considering them as anything but a partisan ideologue here uh one other point i would say is that it's interesting that the irish neutrality uh really doesn't seem to uh bother people like richard boyd barrett and paul murphy and uh, claire daly there in the background and pbp and Sinn fein when it comes to stuff like the russian ukrainian conflict their neutrality only is uh, a neutrality when it when it doesn't when israel is not involved so those are my comments at this point about these remarks. And of course, I did a whole different video about the flawed comparison that Boyd Barrett and so many in Ireland will do regarding coloni colonialism. And there they will say, you know, well, we had an experience of coloni colonialism and therefore we stand with the Palestinians and we stand, you know, with the oppressed people of the world. And as I pointed out, the only way you can draw a comparison between Ireland's experience of English colonialism starting in the 16th century and what they perceive Israel to be doing to the Palestinians is if you negate the entirety of Jewish history because the Jewish people have been in the land of Israel, originated as a people in the land of Israel, have been in the land of Israel unto this day and are indigenous to this part of the world, which is something that Boyd Barrett either doesn't think about or I think more honestly, willfully ignores. So uh, let's go back now to watching the... Uh, speech slash rant slash diatribe. 
at the hands of the British Empire. And what the people who went out in 1916, in the 1916 Rising, and in the Irish Revolution, meant by neutrality, is that we would never side with empires and colonial powers. We would always stand with the oppressed of the world. Always with the oppressed of the world. And in that regard, Michal Martin and this government have brought shame. Shame on the tradition of Irish neutrality. number of weeks, they have reinforced the narrative of lies put out by the US Empire, by Britain and the other sponsors and supporters of the Israeli regime. Hey, this is really, really important. I don't know why more people haven't noticed this. Boyd Barrett, it's very obvious when you listen to his rhetoric, does not refer to Israel. He sometimes refers to Israel, but his general go-to is referring to the Israeli regime. The only other people that I've encountered that refuse to refer to Israel and they use words like the Zionist enemy or the Israeli regime for that matter or the Zionist regime are basically the Ayatollahs uh, of uh, Iran and Lebanon um, as well as Hamas. So basically, you know, with a guy like Richard Boy Barrett, you really have to look slightly beyond the... I, I was going to say the respectable surface, but I'm not sure that's even... Uh, really fair to say but you have to look at the rhetoric and it's very much aligned it's being inspired by none other than Hamas and Iran no rational critics of Israel go about they he won't this guy will not refer to it now even people who if you listen to Hamas spokespeople and Lebanese spokespeople even if their official go-to is the Zionist enemy or the Israeli regime they'll lapse into calling it Israel just out of kind of a I guess a uh, manner of habit and I think it's the same for Boyd Barrett but I think it's extremely telling that his uh, go-to descriptor of Israel is the Israeli regime which is very intentional language that delegitimizes uh, the state not that he doesn't do that in many other ways and uh, it's very very deliberate and of course again to reiterate the point Boyd Barrett does not have a problem with Irish uh, ruptures in Ireland's supposed tradition of neutrality when it comes to criticisms of uh, Russians' action in Ukraine and other conflicts, it's only Israel that gets them literally foaming at the mouth. Claiming somehow that the barbarism we are witnessing in Gaza had something to do with self-defense. And we are here to nail that lie. We are seeing in front of the eyes of the world a genocidal attack on the people of Palestine. So Boyd Barrett here is saying that, you know, Israel isn't engaging in self-defense. It's engaging in, he calls it genocide. Now, uh, Leo Varadkar, the Irish prime minister, did on Thursday, he opined that, um, you know, that what Israel's doing in Gaza isn't, uh, isn't self-defense. It's something more approaching revenge. So Boyd Barrett has gone a couple of degrees beyond that. But it's telling that actually his, his sort of line of thinking here does actually uh, reflect the mainstream view of the Irish government. So for people who are always telling me you're highlighting just a couple of fringe ideologues, I say, is that really the case? Um, I'm not sure. Or I actually don't really believe it is the case. I think that the, okay, the official Irish position... So again, Ireland's neutrality, while you're telling Israel exactly how to pursue a war, you're telling them that it, 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 it's gone beyond self-defense according to your uh, estimations. And of course, Ireland has really no experience in pursuing a war against a uh, Muslim uh, entity, Islamic entity bent on its destruction. But for people like Boyd Barrett, uh, you know, they're happy to uh, become international war experts as long as it means uh, criticizing and bashing Israel. I was talking today with uh, scholars. We were at a meeting organized by the Rohingya people. The Rohingya people, also victims of a genocidal attack in Myanmar. And today, they organized an online international rally 
for Palestine and for Gaza. Oh. And I had a, there was a speaker from Gaza, an academic, along with other academics who were specialized, including Jewish academics, who specialized in genocide. Uh, again pointing out Boyd Bard is very careful to uh, s to bring token token Jews uh, into his argument uh, as a way to very carefully preempt uh, allegations that he is anti-semitic now I've said that Boyd Barrett is anti-semitic I stand by that claim Boyd Barrett in a previous um, address uh, in London uh, compared the Israeli treatment of the Palestinians to what the uh, Germans did to the Jews in the time of Nazism and according to the latest working definition of the IHRA, any comparisons between Nazi Germany and Israel are manifestations of anti-Semitism. There is simply no other reasonable way to use them except that. So uh, I stand by that claim about Richard Boyd Barrett 110%. And I think it's also suspicious that whenever he mentions a Jewish uh, source who's against Palestine, he'll be very careful to underline their Jewishness such as Gideon uh, Levy, who he sometimes comments, uh, brings as an example, the uh, uh, Haaretz uh, uh, commentator, which Boyd Barrett calls Haaretz, uh, but he works for Haaretz and he's one of the more uh, fringe critics in our society here in Israel. So when people engage saying my Jewish friend or my black friend or my gay friend or my gay teacher or my Jewish teacher, it's often a hint that, uh, you know, they're, as they say, he doth protest too much. Genocide. And they said that this is a textbook example of genocide. The dehumanization of the Palestinians. And they pointed out, particularly the academic from Gaza, he said, this is unique. We have seen terrible genocides in history, in the Congo, uh, of the Armenian people of the Nazi Holocaust against the Jews. And this is... Looks like I spoke too soon. So you have here uh, Boyd Barrett, uh, you know, always putting a degree of separation between himself and the... when he's trying to make claims like this, but basically saying, I was at a meeting today with some uh, academics. I didn't quite catch exactly where he said they were from. And he's basically endorsing the views that the genocide that Israel is committing against the Palestinian people is worse than what the Nazis did to uh, the Jews, which is just absolutely absurd, offensive and completely anti-Semitic. Uh, you know, this man is claiming that the extermination of 12 million people, uh, sorry, of how many, however many Jews were killed in the Holocaust is somehow comparable to the collateral civilians who are dying because Israel is going into Gaza and it's very difficult to effectively um, eliminate Hamas uh, without inflicting mass civilian uh, casualties. So that is just pathetic. This is another episode in that dark history of genocides now being perpetrated against the people of Gaza. But what is unique about this, what is unique and makes it all the more obscene, is that it is happening live on television in front of the eyes of the world. And what is also unique about it is the perpetrators of this genocide are not even hiding their genocidal intent. They are saying it in front of the world. We are going to starve an entire population of food, of water, of electricity, of medicine. They have described the Palestinian people as animals. I'm not sure really kind of pointing out facts is is really useful in this case because when you're dealing with someone like Boyd Barrett it's so uh I don't think facts matter really to him uh Israel is allowing humanitarian aid into Gaza on a daily basis it clearly is putting pressure on the Palestinian population I'm not going to deny that but to call this a genocide uh when Israel has tried to move people out of North Gaza uh into South Gaza opening up aid corridors where possible facilitating the delivery of humanitarian aid into Gaza to compare that to the Holocaust to compare that to other genocides I mean it just kind of beggars belief and yes and yes their sponsors the United States and Britain cannot even say they are supporting them they could not continue this massacre
without the support of the United States, of Britain, of France, of Germany, of people like Ursula von der Leyen. They are their sponsors. They have brought so one 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 of the guy one of the people Boyd Barrett goes off against all the time is Ursula von der Leyen, who put out a statement uh, just about when the conflict kicked off, saying that the EU stands with Israel, and that's made him absolutely batshit crazy. You can just kind of see the kind of looking at the body language, like the just ferocity of this man is kind of almost scary to behold, and it kind of looks like um, the orators very grim orators from uh, history, just the way this guy speaks. I've just realised this video is already twenty minutes long, and do you know what? I have better things to do on my Saturday evening than watch the entire thing. But I do want to put this up on YouTube because we've already seen in the five minutes of the speech, we've seen Boyd Barrett comparing Israel to Nazi Germany. We've seen a bunch of lies. Um, and uh, if anyone really doubts from a little snapshot that this guy is uh, an extremist, uh, his rhetoric mirrors that of uh, Iran and Hamas and all those. And uh, it's very, he won't even refer to Israel. Uh, this guy wants Israel destroyed. This guy is an anti-Semite and um, he is sitting there in Dublin with two police people right behind him, listening to every word he says. And uh, I think this man is dangerous. And really, that's kind of the essential point of this video was putting this out. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, as I said, comments are on review mode for this just for this particular video. And if you want to get more videos from me, do consider subscribing here on YouTube. Have a great day.